The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. So here on the show, behind the scenes, we talk about movies a lot. And Ben here loves to make his own movies when he has time. And we've been talking lately about this space sci-fi movie idea you had, right? Right, yeah, Max and I have been kind of toying with it, you know, between takes. We wanted to do an episode about movie props for a while now. We did a previous one about uh, the puppet that could talk automatically, and that was really fun. Mm -hmm. So we're like, hey, we should do that again. We wanted to see if there's any local filmmakers that needed help. We really couldn't find anybody. There wasn't any current production. So we're like, okay, well, maybe we can make a proof of concept prop for our own idea. What a great place to start a computer! Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this is going to be a space station and we're like, okay, what kind of modular computer would be in a space station? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to build. So we're going to use things left over from the scrapping episode. Okay. That make Karen yeah. happy. Yep. And we'll probably have to buy a few new things in too. But we also want to make everything work. So not only could this be a prop, but it could also be a working computer. So here's some concepts I came up with. So I'm thinking we could start with a mouse, like a space mouse. It's magnetic, kind of like when we did that steam controller. Okay. And it could have a dial around it because, you know, it's always good to like, you know, oh, I'm moving something or I'm doing some sort of fine adjustment. So what we could do is we could take apart a very small travel mouse and we could turn the scroll wheel sideways so it interfaces with the inside of the ring. Ooh. So when you turn the ring, it actually turns the scroll yeah, wheel. Yeah, I like so that. We can make a working mouse. And then I thought it'd be cool if we had a computer panel with uh, mouse pads on either side, like metallic mouse pads that either switch swing out or slide out. So for the computer itself, I'm thinking, you know, you need a lot of space in space because there's not much space. So it would be against the wall and you can see the screen normally like, ooh, status update, blah, blah, blah. Maybe buttons are on the screen like, you know, ooh, do this really quick. Once you pull out the keyboard, then you can pull out the, basically where the mice go. So we'll find a keyboard that has nice looking keys and then we can add some detail to the top. Hey, remember all those LEDs you salvaged out of that stereo? Can we put them there? We can. Yes! They can be like status lights. Like, right. whoop, 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 your station's about to explode. Uh, yeah, so mouse, keyboard, a way to make the mice and the mouse pads come out of the keyboard, and then we'll attach that to arms to a wall that goes to the screen. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, look, I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I ordered this really small mouse. Isn't it cute? Look how small it is. The reason I did that was because I want to build this inside of something else. So let's do a teardown. My sketches, I have like a circular mouse a rotary mouse, if you will. That means I need the smallest parts possible in, in order to fit them inside of a circle. Kind of like a circle of life. Man, this thing is so small. Oh good, it looks simple inside. I like that. We have a crystal, an inductor. This is the middle mouse button click wheel. This is probably just some sort of indicator light. This is handy too. Some mice use optical wheel encoders where they'll have slits through the wheel and they'll shine a light through it and count the changes in the pulse. This one just has a rotary encoder, which is good because we can just desolder it and move it wherever we want. So we got a light here, an LED, which shines into the reflector, which then goes down and is picked up by the imager, which is this integrated circuit right here. Then we have a glop top ASIC, which is probably doing the wireless. Oh, here, let me pull this off, take a look. This part, this uh, plastic part is basically a light tube. Oh, looks like you got a bit of a lens action going on too right there. This should work well though, because as long as we can fit this circuit board inside of a single circle, we should be able to make our circular mouse. In the dark, twisted underground world of Sonic the Hedgehog fan art. So the reason why we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog is because there's this huge thing on the internet, which is fan fiction Sonic the Hedgehog art. And it's really kind of grown exponentially and it's kind of weird. So basically, if you type in any name, the hedgehog, like Max the hedgehog or Ben the hedgehog, someone out there has drawn a hedgehog with their name on it and made it look like themselves. And it's, it's kind of a scary rabbit hole, but if you ever want to jump down it, just type in your name, the hedgehog into Google and hang on tight. All right, so my idea here is to have 
kind of a rotary mouse. So the mouse would stay in place and the outside of it rotates. So if you're doing some space stuff, you could be like, you could rotate it like a disc, you know? So it's kind of like one of those multi-function mice they use for 3D drawings. You know, we can have the circuit board pretty much be like it was in the center here and there'll be a battery on it. But what we'll do is we'll take the rotary wheel and mount it sideways so it will actually connect with the outer disc. So when we rotate the disc, it will actually turn the wheel. And then we'll put a null wheel on the other side to keep it balanced. Actually, we might actually want three wheels. Yeah, we probably do. So I'll make two null wheels that don't do anything. And then the real wheel here. This looks like a pretty safe size. So now that I've sketched it up here, I can start drawing it on the computer. I drew the base of the mouse into the computer, call that PCB mount, and I found the smallest circle that could go around it, which is about three inches. So I drew a dial around that with kind of a knurled edge. I want the dial to rotate around the entire mouse, kind of like a hockey puck. I'm going to start extruding these surfaces. All right, so here's a three-dimensional view. This is what's going to hold the mouse. There's also a little optic here. There's a little place for that. I basically copied the shapes that I found inside of the mouse's case. So we've got a hole for the optic, two mounting screws, sync button, and power switch. The other features in this are some recessed areas to hold neodymium magnets to hold the mouse on the surface. This is going to be the scroll wheel, which is this right here. So the scroll wheel will actually be sideways on it. So the dial will move it. So the dial will rotate around the mouse. And there's actually a little bit of a lip down here. So basically you put everything into the base, then you put the dial on top of it. Then you put in the, the uh, scroll wheel and there'll be an idler wheel over here as well. See the two wheels? That should hold it in place. I probably should have drawn a third wheel, but I don't think I actually have room for that. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is get all this printed and assembled, and then once I know this works, I'm gonna design the part that fits on top that attaches to these, these four screw holes that will enclose it and then have the two buttons. Here is the base piece. So I'm gonna put in the optic like that. Now the circuit board goes on top of that. Should all line up. There we go. I'm not gonna bother screwing it in place just yet. The scroll wheel goes there. The idler wheel will go here. I'm not gonna install that quite yet. Okay, and then this is the outer dial. It's got a little inner lip on it. You might not be able to see it, but it's there. So this actually fits in right here. So see how the base is a little lower than the dial? And the dial spins the scroll wheel. Cool, so so far this, this works. And this is gonna have four magnets on it, so when it's attached to a metal base, the mouse won't move when you spin the dial. It'll be held in place which would be pretty cool. So it's like, you know, you're doing trim adjustments. Yeah, in space. All right, so the next thing I need to do is design the part that goes over this. It's going to have the rotary encoder because I need to move that over here. And then, so it's gonna have these four screw points, a rotary encoder connection, idler wheel connection, and then also space for the two buttons. So I'll get designing that next. Here's the status on the space mouse. I have the base pretty much intact. These are the buttons once I get them wired up. We have a ring here. I've printed a couple of these. PLA, ABS, this one had an error near the end. So I'm just seeing what material is best. I think ABS on ABS feels the best. I wanted this PLA one to make it kind of shiny and stiffer, but it has more drag. Yeah, so I'm, I'm reprinting another one of these. So how you assemble it, I'll just use this in the meantime, is this goes in here and you put it onto the wheel and then you put in the idler wheel on the left. The idler wheel just keeps it level. And then this is the part that I'm still working on. This is the front of it. And there wasn't very much space at all underneath it for buttons. So I have to put these tack switches kind of up higher than I wanted to inside of the buttons almost. So what I've been doing is 3D printing buttons to try to find something that's hollow that will work with these tack switches. I haven't quite landed on the solution yet, but I'll just show you where I am so far with the rest of this. So that's what it'll look like when it's done. Of course, there'll be buttons here. So you're like, woo, mouse, and then you can, ooh, you know. This will actually work as a scroll wheel too. So it'll be a working scroll wheel space mouse and it's magnetic. So if it's like on a platform or something, it shouldn't move. 
Well, unless it's not screwed together. I'm ready to button up the puck mouse. To recap, there's the rotary mouse wheel here that interfaces with the outer ring, so that actually works. Battery is just slapped in there. There's an idler wheel here, and then I put some tack switches on the top. I didn't have a whole lot of room for the buttons with the battery in place, but it just barely fits. So for the buttons, they click, and I also made them look like miniature dials themselves. And you can even turn them if you want, although they don't do anything, they're just for show. So I screw it in from the bottom. That attaches the top to the main base and the rotary dial, which is kind of redundant, goes in between that. So in theory, the magnetic bottom should keep it attached, you know, so if it's like, oh, like they're in space, but then like they fold out the keyboard for the computer like that. So you can move it around. So it works as a mouse, left and right mouse buttons. And then you can also use the scroll wheel around it. So my thought was, you know, they could use this in a movie like to do fine adjustments on a piece of equipment. All right, Felix. Yeah, let's uh, do something. Yeah, so the drawing that I made on the computer, the keyboard area is 20 and three quarters wide, which will also be the same width as the screen and it's 6.5 inches tall. So, you know how I like to make things out of paper first. So we've got these drawer rails that I pulled out of a drawer that I'm not using anymore. So we're thinking that maybe uh, our pads for the space mice can slide out and reveal the keyboard. Space mice sounds like a Don Bluth film. From the creative Titan AE and Fievel goes west. Space mouse. So this is the basic size that we would have. Yeah, it's a couple things to think about. So if the magnetic things were in front of the keyboard right. and the slides were behind the keyboard, when they slide out, there wouldn't be a very good connection because you'd only be connected like one bit of it, like here, so it'd be like right? Oh, there's another thing to think about. Depending on the size of the magnetic mouse pad, would they intersect with each other? Like they couldn't take up this full width because they'd hit each other. Right. So you'd be actually looking at something like- Here? Yeah, like here and here. And then, does that actually get past? Oh yeah, that would definitely well, that would definitely get past the edge of the casing. Were you born a scrapper? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, really? I, yeah. I came out scrapping. Okay, ready? Yeah. yeah. Seems like they go further than they need to. Yep. Is that gap gonna be a problem? I wonder. Um, I mean, I don't care if like we see this. the ball bearings. These ball bearings are cool. So I'm designing things one bit at a time for the keyboard as well. I created this paper mask. And I think I'm going to actually ditch a lot of the keys, like the function keys, alt, control, windows. I'm gonna get rid of all of that to give the keyboard a more classic, clean look. Then I started making some accessory panels. This one will go above the keyboard and it's going to use some of the leftover LEDs that Karen scrapped out of that stereo system. Such as this LED. Yay, we recycled the LEDs. So we're trying to use anything that we have from that scrap episode in this build. So yeah, these LEDs will work out well. We'll have to check their polarities. So this would go right about here. There is kind of a challenge of the keyboard is bigger than it looks. You know, it's kind of like an iceberg. A lot of it's underwater. So this will have to go right about here because the LED has to be above the black lip. And then if we bend the leads, it will be about like that. Yeah, oh, there should be enough room. We're roughly gonna look like that. So I wanna keep everything as thin as possible so the keyboard doesn't look like it's kind of swimming in a big open space. And I'm also gonna keep in mind that the magnetic mouse pad covers that slide out or rotate out will be over this as well. So you know, if you look at this thing and be like, oh, it's like this, and then you go, vroom, open it up, and then there's a keyboard too, and then you can close it, vroom, and then you just have your magnetic mice pucks. So yeah, I'm just uh, cutting one thing at a time, making paper patterns and sketches to get a good idea of what it's gonna look like. 
So the keyboard is the last detail I want to design here. We took apart the existing keyboard and measured everything. So this is the template that fits it. And then I use these LEDs. These are left over from the thing that Karen scrapped in a previous episode. These will be indicator lights. And then I know I want this uh, bezel inset here that just has a bunch of technical terms on it. So the question becomes, what should we make this look like? So Karen did this mock-up. This is how it actually looked like in a movie. This is how everything goes together. So we need to pick a good material for the keyboard, although we're running out of plastic. The mice pad are a certain color of gray. And then this is a little lighter and this is a little lighter yet. That would give us a good separation because the keys are black. So we put something light around the keys that'll make the keys show up better. So down here, I've got some concepts. I'm thinking we could break up the area by putting a few more information panels bolted on here and here, and then maybe have some faux speaker holes on the left and right, and then some sort of texture to go behind that. Although I still think it's a little too white. I could try taking a piece of this white plastic and spray painting it gray just to bring the color down a little bit. So how this is gonna assemble is like this. Here's a side view. I'm gonna make these uh, ribbings along the side, and these will keep a certain amount of distance between the keyboard at the top and the panel at the bottom. So the mice and the mouse pad things, they will fit in here and slide out and the keyboard will stay on top. And then we can also use these ribbings to attach an arm later on. We want this to attach to the wall. That can just attach right there. And this will give it kind of a, a more industrious look. It's like, oh, look, you could hang things on the keyboard. You could attach things to it. So we'll add some pipes in there too. That should give it a nice, you know, dimensional look. So here are the pieces I have to cut. I have a rear frame to go behind the keyboard, a middle frame that will hold the keyboard, and then the thing that I'm working on, the front plate area that I'm trying to pick out the best colors for. So I'm gonna do a few tests, cut some material, and then see what I can assemble. Okay, here are the slide out mouse pads we're going to design. There's a black acrylic frame first. Then we cut this quarter inch foam that goes under that. Then under that, there's a piece of cookie sheet. That's one of the reasons we used the foam was because the foam will hide the irregularities in the cutting that we did. And then behind that will go this piece of quarter inch acrylic and that will pull everything tightly together. And then I have these 3D printed pieces that will lock into the slide arm and then those will bolt into the acrylic. So let's see if this all works. So I've got the back on the first arm. Uses a 3D print, funky foam, and a screw, so it's held vertically as well, otherwise it would tilt. So it seems like it's pretty decent service. It's at least as good as one of those fold-out trays when you're in an exit row on an airplane. All right, so now I'm going to re-bolt the main surface to it, and then we'll continue on. So this will come out from under the keyboard and there'll be one on the left too. That's why these are staggered. So the arms are like this. That's why they're not centered. So the other one will actually be mounted here instead of up here. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Okay, I think I am going to reprint this. It looks good, but you can see the uh, screw holes under this adhesive vinyl stuff. So I'm gonna recut this uh, centimeter pattern using a thicker material. Yes, it looks so finally. pretty. It's very sciencey yet also fictiony. Do you remember these LEDs? I do, because I was born a scrapper and I recognize my scrap. They came from the Earth Day Salvage Wars episode and Karen got these out of an old stereo. They look kind of futuristic though. Yeah, yeah, kind of retro futuristic. So check out this, we use these old drawer slides. So these are the magnetic mouse pads and there's the custom mouse. Oh yeah, it's hooked up to the computer. So yes, it's a prop that works. What? Yes. So try the scroll wheel. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so I thought, you know, if you're gonna build something, you might as well make it work, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think the way this would go in, like, as a prop, is it would sit against the wall like this. Yeah. And then it would pull out when you're ready to use it, and then you can pull these out as well. So yeah, uh, it took a little longer than I would have liked, and we didn't get time to make the screen, but uh, I feel it turned out really well. It looks great. It's time for a tech timeout. For the logic puzzle part of our Hekmanji game, we're going to need patch cables. I'm making three different lengths, short, medium, and long. And uh, what we've got here is this silicone insulated wire, uh, 16 gauge. All I'm doing is cutting a length of wire. There we go. We have these jackets uh, for these banana plugs here. We'll put these on. These are almost exactly the diameter of our wire, so they're a little snug. That's okay. Put one on each end. I found that doing this before shortening or before stripping the wire is uh, makes it a little bit easier. I'll just uh, strip an end off. We'll put the banana plug on our helping hands here. Put the wire in. Got the soldering iron and the solder. This is the a big uh, high watt soldering iron here. Since this banana plug is all metal and the gauge is so low, you need a lot of heat for this. Let that cool. And once that cools, you can screw the jacket on. It's still really kind of warm yet. Now, since I gotta make, uh, I don't know, maybe like 25 of these, what I've decided to do to help things go on a little faster is load up all these helping hands with the banana plugs. I've already cut to length a bunch of wires and got the jackets on, so I can do these in mass. And so this is a repetitive task, trying to make it as, as uh, efficient as possible. There we go. So at this point, I'm just gonna finish all these up and you'll see them in part two of the Hackmanji episode. That's all the time we have for today. Have you ever made a movie or a theater prop involving electronics? Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Let's go to space. Oh yeah, can you I'll fly? drive. All right. Watch out, an asteroid! Oh man! Let's put a nuclear Hero. bomb in it. Here, I blew it up. Did you show us your impression of being sucked out of the airlock again? Uh, uh, oh, there's like things flying past you. Uh, yeah, why do I always like switch hands? <laughs> <laughs> they call me the new Amy Winehouse, but I'm not remotely as interesting. Think about it, who would put a self-destruct feature in a spaceship? That's really stupid. If you have something super valuable and you don't want it to fall into the hands of aliens, if they're trying to steal your technology. The Land Before Time, there's so many sequels, the dinosaurs eventually evolve into being able to go into space. <laughs> and of course, dreams. It's held in place by dreams. Hey Felix, are you still game to be the guitar player in my country music band? I can't close because of the rocks, they're attacking me. <laughs> what? The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.